Hello and welcome to a new SwiftUI tutorial. In this depart video series, we will talk about how to navigate between views in SwiftUI while not relying on a navigation view. A navigation view forces you to stack your views into a navigation stack like this. The technique we describe in this tutorial, however, allows you to navigate between different SwiftUI views completely independently. Take a look at this example. This concept may sound trivial, but by understanding it deeply, we can learn a lot about the data flow concepts used in SwiftUI. In summary, here's what you'll learn in this series. How to navigate between views without relying on a navigation view hierarchy. More advanced data flow techniques, including observable objects, state objects, and environment objects. Furthermore, we will take a first look at using animations in SwiftUI. In this part of the mini-series, we will learn how to navigate between views using a observable and state object. In the next part, we learn how to accomplish the same behavior more efficiently using an environment object and apply some nice navigation animations. For learning how to navigate between different views in SwiftUI, it's appropriate to start with an example that's not too complex. Suppose we have an app with two different views. Content View Alpha shows an image view with a grumpy dog and a button reading next. The other view called Content View Beta shows an image view with a happy dog and a button reading back. You can download the starter project by clicking the corresponding GitHub link in the description. We want to connect those views in a way that when we tap on the buttons we navigate back and forth. We could accomplish this using a navigation view. But as said we don't want to use such a navigation view hierarchy. Instead we want both views to be independent of each other. So let's get started. The first step is to create a mother view that hosts both content views as its subviews. For this purpose create a new SwiftUI view file and name it mother view. In this view we want to show either content view alpha or content view beta depending on where the user has navigated to. Important. Since our mother view will contain the content views it must be the root view when the app launches. To set the mother view as the root view go into the navigating in SwiftUI app.swift file and replace the content view alpha inside the window group with an instance of our mother view. To keep track of the selected main view we need to declare a state property. At default we want a present content view alpha as the first page. For this purpose create a new Swift file called helper and insert the following enum. Now we can declare the state property in our mother view and assign it to the page one option of our page enum. As a quick reminder, state properties are used for displaying views depending on the state's data. Every time the state gets updated, it triggers the view to refresh itself. If you're not familiar with the concept of state property wrappers in SwiftUI, we strongly recommend you to read the tutorial we linked in the description. This is crucial for understanding the following concepts. Depending on the page assigned to the current page state, we want to either host content view alpha or content view beta. Let's implement this logic by inserting a switch statement inside a vStack. Let's run our preview simulator and take a look at it. Since our state is currently assigned to page 1, our first switch case is met and the content view alpha gets hosted. Let's change the page state to page 2 and see what happens. Here we go. Because the state changed, our whole mother view gets updated and the switch block gets executed again, this time showing us content view beta. So far, so good but we want to let the user change the current page state by tapping on the buttons inside of content view alpha and content view beta respectively. Note that the buttons are not part of the mother view itself so we need to create a bridge for accessing the mother view's current page state from the outside. For instance, when tapping on the next button of content view alpha we want to alter the page assigned to the current page state of the mother view for eventually navigating to content view beta. We can achieve this by interjecting something called an observable object into our mother view content view's hierarchy. At this point you are probably asking yourself, what the heck are observable objects? 
Well, understanding this can be pretty tough but don't worry we will explain it to you in a simple way. Observable objects are similar to state properties which you should already know. But instead of just refreshing the body of the related view when the data assigned to the state changes observable objects are capable of the following things. Instead of variables observable objects are classes that can contain data. For example a string assigned to a variable. We can bind multiple views to the observable object. In other words we can make these views observe the observable object. The observing views can access and manipulate the data inside the observable object. When a change happens to the observable object's data all observing views get automatically notified and refreshed similar to when the value assigned to a state changes. So how can we make use of this functionality? Well we can create an observable object class that contains a variable indicating the current page that should be displayed. Then we can bind our mother view our content view alpha and our content view beta to it. Then we can tell our mother view to show the corresponding content view depending on the page assigned to the observable object's variable. Using the buttons inside the content views we can update the page assigned to the observable object's variable. This would cause all three observing views to update their bodies including the mother view. By doing this we can achieve that the mother view will show the correct content view depending on the selected page. Frankly this seems a little bit abstract but it should become clearer when applying this concept to our app. Let's create such an observable object. To do this create a new Swift file and call it vRooter. Make sure you import the SwiftUI framework. Then create a class also called vRooter that conforms to the observable object protocol. As said an observable object notifies and causes all of its observing views to update themselves when a data update occurs. But what exactly do we mean by that? As said the main task of our vRooter should be to stay tracked on which page meaning which content view should be currently shown whether it's on the launch of the app or when the user taps on a specific button. For this purpose we declare a variable called current page inside our vRooter class and assign page 1 to it as its default value. The views that will observe the view router especially the mother view should get notified and updated when the page assigned to the current page changes. To do this we use the published property wrapper. The published property wrapper works very similarly to the state property wrapper. Every time the value assigned to the wrapped property changes every observing view updates. In our case we want our mother view to observe the view router and to navigate to the right page depending on the current page's updated value. To make the mother view observe the view router we need to declare a state object property which is used for binding views to observable objects. When doing this we also need to provide our mother view preview struct with an instance of the view router. In the navigating in SwiftUI app.swift file we define the mother view as the root view when the app launches. Thus not only does our preview simulator needs to be provided with a view router instance but also the actual app hierarchy when the app gets executed on a real device or in the regular simulator. So go to the navigating in SwiftUI app file and declare a state object property. Then pass the initialized state object to the view router of our mother view. Our mother view router is now able to observe and access the view router's observable object. So let's show the corresponding content view depending on the page assigned to the view router's current page property. You can delete the current page state of the mother view since we won't need it anymore. Let's take a look at the simulator of our mother view. The mother view reads the value of the view router's current page variable and hosts the corresponding content view. We can prove this by changing the default value assigned to the view router's current page property to page 2. Let's go back to the mother view preview simulator and see what happens. The published property of our observable object told the mother view to update its body. Because we want content view alpha to be the default view we assign one to the current page property again. We accomplished a lot so far. We initialized a view router instance and bound it to the mother view by using a state object. Every time the values assigned to the current page property of the view router instance gets updated the mother view will update its body with eventually showing the correct content view. Our mother view is now able to show the correct content view depending on the page assigned to the current page property of the view router. 
But until now the user is not able to change this value by tapping on the respective button of Content View Alpha and Content View Beta. Let's start with Content View Alpha. To let it access the current page and manipulate its value we have to bind it to the view router. So let's create a state object again. Accordingly, we need to update the content view alpha preview struct. Content view alpha should observe the view router instance we created inside the navigating and swift to I struct and pass to the mother view. So let's assign our new state object to this instance when initializing content view alpha in our mother view. Now we have access to the current page property of our view router. Use the button's action closure to assign page to to it when tapping on the next button. Okay. Let's see if that works. Run the app in the regular simulator or start a live preview of the mother view and tap on the next button. We successfully navigate to Content View Beta. Here is what happens when the user taps on the next button of Content View Alpha. Content View Alpha changes the page assigned to the current page property of the view router to page 2. Therefore, the view router tells all bound views to update their bodies, including the mother view. The mother view updates its body and checks the current page's value. Because its page to the case for showing Content View Beta is met and we eventually navigate to it. To be able to navigate back to Content View Alpha repeat this implementation process for Content View Beta. First declare a state object property as a view router instance. Then update the related preview struct. Next assign this view router property to the initial view router instance passed by the navigating and swift UI app struct to the mother view. Finally update the button's action parameter for showing the first page again. We can now navigate independently between our content views. Let us recap what we have achieved so far. We just figured out how to navigate between different views using an observable object. We created a view router and bound our mother view and the content views to it. Then we achieved to manipulate the view router's current page property when clicking on the content views buttons. Due to the published property wrappers functionality this causes the mother view to update its body with eventually hosting the correct content view. But often, there is an alternative more efficient way to do this. Using an environment object. Environment objects provide us with more freedom and independence within our app's view hierarchy. You will see what we mean by that when watching the second part of this tutorial. We will also talk about adding animated transitions so make sure you check it out. By the way we've uploaded the whole source code of this app to GitHub. Check the link in the description for this. We hope to see you in the next part of this series. Until then make sure you subscribe to this channel for more SwiftUI tutorials.